It's easy to take shots at successful institutions. Everyone loves to put successful people up on pedestals and then they're overcome with the urge to tear them back down again. Some people no longer watch Marvel films to see how good the next one is, but to see when the bubble's finally going to burst, when the empire's finally going to crumble. They're perverts for failure, and to be honest, we're all a little bit guilty of that sometimes. Unfortunately, for those card-carrying anti-Marvel fans, most of their key arguments are built on sand. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 Marvel movie complaints that are total bullshit. Number 10, they don't do good villains. I mean, that's that's wrong, right? Because even before Loki became great, he had competition. Jeff Bridges as Obadiah Stane was the perfect thematic counterpoint to Tony Stark. Red Skull was a cool, iconic presence. Zemo hurt the Avengers like no one else ever has. And while he was undoubtedly divisive, James Spader's Frankenstein's monster Ultron was really entertaining. Now, sure, there have been low points. Abomination, Whiplash, and Malekith were all bland. But to say that they're all bad is just plain foolishness. Stop being a damn fool! Number nine, they're entirely predictable and formulaic. Even if the first rule of branding is you don't mess with the brand, to say they don't throw curveballs is wrong. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy featured a raccoon and a talking tree. They did a heist comedy with Ant-Man. Winter Soldier was a paranoid spy thriller. They bucked expectations and made Civil War's villain a small-scale angel of personal vengeance. I mean, look how psychedelic and weird Doctor Strange looks. There's a surprising amount of variety. They feature similar set pieces sometimes, sure. I mean, a lot of the films do end with something in the sky, but the tones are all wildly different. Number eight, the MCU is not diverse. Well, this one's probably the fairest argument, but at least times are changing now. We have the Black Panther movie coming, which ostensibly has an entirely black cast and director. Captain Marvel will become the first female lead. Wasp is sharing top billing with Ant-Man. And there are some pretty loud rumors of a Black Widow standalone coming. That's a damn sight more diverse than most other comic book movie slates. Now, the whitewashing of the Ancient One and Doctor Strange is a bit painful, but you know, how exactly do you cast someone from a made-up country anyway? Number seven, there should have been a Black Widow film already. Up until the age of Ultron, Black Widow had no backstory. I mean, she had red in her ledger, sure, and a vague hint of a murky past, but it wasn't fleshed out. She was presented instead as a fully formed character whose intrigue was peeled away as it became clear she wasn't quite the impenetrable badass she initially looked. That was an interesting approach, and whisper it, Black Widow was a better supporting character than she was a lead in her own right because of that mystique. Her interactions with other characters were more intriguing, her allegiances more difficult to understand, allowing her to build up a sort of anti-hero sidekick mythology. And telling her story from that foundation now will be much, much better. Number six, they can't possibly replace the main cast. Why not? Spider-Man has been three actors in nine years and comic book movies swap leads around all the time. What's the issue? I mean, sure, Robert Downey Jr. is a great Tony Stark, best he's ever been in Civil War, and Chris Evans cuts the right balance of regal and idealistic with Cap, but the performances aren't the limit of the character's appeal. The writing matters, the directing matters, their comic book history matters, and fans are surprisingly willing to accept new actors. Why else would there be such a currency around casting news? I mean, just look at Spider-Man. Tobey Maguire was amazing, but Tom Holland is being proclaimed as the best ever after a grand total of about 12 minutes of screen time. Number five, the third acts all suck. Honestly, we've had this comment on our website a bunch of times. The ending of the original Avengers movie is one of the best third acts ever. I will fight anyone who disagrees. Thor, The Dark World's dimension hopping final fight and Loki's death are the film's high point. Ant-Man's ridiculous miniature fight, Civil War's brutal three-way fight and Zemo's revelation, Guardians of the Galaxy's emotional payoff. Some of the MCU's best moments have come in those final acts. Number four, they overstuff. All right, sometimes. Spider-Man 3 was famous for that, after all. But right now, the balance of character screen time is one of the biggest strings to Marvel's bow. The problem with overstuffing is director restraint and failure to balance. So far, the MCU has proven their filmmakers are willing to leave out anticipated sequences or cut out characters when they aren't necessarily the most important element of the film. That's why they don't need 183 minutes to make an ultimate cut that actually makes any sense. Number three, they ruin the source material. Come on now, pals. Civil War would have required a six hour runtime for a pure adaptation and it would have required Spider-Man to unmask before his very own first standalone movie. That's only two fatal issues. And then there's Ultron, the character everyone loves to complain about. I mean, he was as vulnerable, as arrogant, and as much of a showman as Tony Stark. And the decision to give him all of his creator's flaws was inspired. And all of this ignores the point that purely adapting a comic book beat for beat leaves precious little space for imagination. And that's what the craft of filmmaking is all about. Sure, there's scope to interpret and visualize, but there's no storytelling scope if you have to do it as rigidly as in the comics. And if there's no deviation from the comics, if there's no originality 
actually in the actual filmmaking process itself, well, isn't that what everyone's going to complain about? Number two, the diminishing returns argument. If anything, they're getting better. There were some pretty mean stutters in the first years of the universe. The Incredible Hulk was poor. Iron Man 2 wasn't great. It's not like they were all swings to the fence that paid off and now they're declining. More recent films like Guardians of the Galaxy, Ant-Man and Civil War were all excellent and insisting that the quality of each one is diminishing is balls, sir. Number one, it's all Disney-fied and family fun. Have you seen Disney animations? They are brutal. They have more emotional heft than the 90% of the blockbusters released today, and they have more rich, deeply affecting adult messages. Pinocchio's f***ing terrifying. Truth is, despite not having that awful blue-gray palette DC has, and despite the fact that characters sometimes smile, the films have already flirted with seriously complex ideas. We've seen death, loss, alienation from modern society, mental illness, collateral damage in wartime, a moral spectrum that is very much shades of grey. I argue that's way more complex than any of the DCEU's darkness, which most of the time is just shallow brooding and just death. Now don't get us wrong, we are not Marvel fanboys over DC. We don't hate DC. We want DC to do well. We can't wait for the Wonder Woman movie. It looks good. But the problem is DC has been getting so much critical flack at the moment that a lot of that is being redirected by fans at Marvel and we just think most of it's undeserved. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.